I'm Delta Work, and it's time for another episode of Very Delta. You can call him Belly. Elliot Norris is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta est pour la femme qui fait de vous sur la lune. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. I think it's high time that we stopped responding to thank you with no problem, especially in a customer service setting. I was at a restaurant the other day and uh, the server was bringing out the items and every time they would set something down and I would say thank you, they would say, not a problem, no problem, not a problem, hey, no problem. And it sort of put in my mind this feeling that there was a problem to begin with. I feel like when you work in a customer service setting, the idea is to make the customer feel as comfortable as possible. Now, I know people are working really hard. Most of them are overworked, underpaid. It is an epidemic. Like We get that that's happening. But I feel like when you're in a situation where um, your job is to specifically make someone uh, in a paid service feel very, very comfortable and valued, uh, you know, I think those words really matter. When I was working in a department store in college, I remember that it was our responsibility at the cash wrap station. When you saw someone in line behind the person you were helping, you would say, thank you for waiting. We'll be right with you. Or to step out of line, grab their items and say, thank you for waiting. I'll hold these at the register for you while you wait. Uh, I don't think that really happens anymore. I've been to a Macy's recently and shopping at Macy's is like shopping at 7-Eleven, except there's still Macy's prices in some ways. Uh, So, you know, I get it. This is definitely a first world problem. There are bigger fish to fry in the world. But I I, here I like to fry the small fish here. I like to uh, have a fry up all day long. And I like to talk about the things that really would separate an experience and, and, and take it to a place where somebody feels comfortable spending money in your space. Again, this is not about shopping at 7-Eleven. This is not shop about shop. This is not about this is not about going and getting your oil changed. We get what happens in those environments. But if you're at a restaurant where your bill for a couple of people is going to be, you know, a hundred dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars, I feel like there should be a training that says when the customer says thank you, you say my pleasure. Or is there anything else I can do to make your experience better? There's just small things that you can do and say that are going to make the customer feel like I really need to come back here and spend $40 on a plate of food. Now, of course, for some people, that's not a lot of money. But in my mind, I think it is. There's a restaurant that I like to go to pretty frequently. And whenever they set something down, they always say, oh, pardon my reach because they're reaching across you. I think that's a very nice thing to say. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of people blowing their nose at, at a, a dinner table, but I get that it happens. I think it would be, I would be less bothered by it if I was eating uh, in the bleachers. But if I'm eating at like a sit down restaurant where we've made a reservation, you know, I'm assuming that when somebody reaches their arm across somebody's face, they're going to say like, pardon my reach or excuse me or uh, pardon me. Um, I also feel like, you know, it's also my responsibility to not blow my nose at the table unless, I don't know, there's some other medical issue going on that I can't get up from the table. But I just think that there's this like mannered thing that happens when you are an employee of a space that even though the conditions are not the most comfortable conditions, I think a lot of these, uh, and I, 
And even though these conditions are not the most comfortable conditions for the employee with regards to pay, compensation, work hours, workload, doing somebody else's job, I'm definitely more concerned about those things than I am about people, uh, you know, uh, saying no problem or no worries. But I'm questioning when these establishments decided not only are we going to expect our employees to do other people's work and not be compensated, we are also not going to train them to at least give off this facade that the customers are very welcome here, that the customers are number one priority here, that our diners uh, really should be having an experience where it seems like whatever they need, they don't have to ask for. When I'm in a setting, whether it's a restaurant or if I'm uh, picking up dry cleaning or doing anything where someone uh, providing that service says thank you, I generally say thank you as well. Uh, I don't normally say you're welcome because in my mind, it's like saying, uh, you know, they say thank you for for being our patron. They say thank you for being our patron. And I don't feel like I want to say to them, like, you're welcome, because I feel like that's like saying you're lucky that I chose to be here. Like, I don't want to say that. I just want to say, well, thank you, because I do appreciate what's going on here. I do appreciate that service. I do appreciate uh, what you've done here. But, you know, when you go to different places, there are different dialogues that happen and different approaches. So it is very common in a place where, uh, you know, quote unquote, uh, a a, a masculine space, quote unquote, a a men's place, as they would once say, like uh, an auto body shop. For people to say, uh, oh, hey, boss, it's going to be another 30 minutes or try to, you know, fist bump you or, or whatever, because they feel like it's familiar that we're all about cars and and we're all friends and we're all guys or whatever. But that's that sort of dichotomy and that that language changes depending upon age, because when someone older is there, that isn't really the case. So if an older man is there, he's generally revered as not boss and not chief and not bro He's revered as like, yes, sir, no, sir. But when the age changes, the dialogue changes because you no longer become a revered customer. You just become this familiar person who's the same age. Uh, You know, this also happens at a lot of newer restaurants that are generally training people to be more respectful of pronouns and uh, teaching people to be more respectful of um the things that make us different and revering those things as the things that make us similar. So in many ways, the thank you is generally, uh, I appreciate you, or we appreciate your business. We appreciate your service because uh, it, it, it becomes like a, a blanket way of constantly saying thank you without saying thank you. It's like another step in thank you. And while that's very nice, um, you know, that can somehow and in many ways come off as like a little bit like sugar sweet. Like you don't have to say that over and over and over. Uh, But for some people, I mean, maybe, maybe that's better. Maybe that's better than saying to people, eh, no problem. No worries. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I wasn't worried about it. I was never worried about it. I came in here and I ordered what I ordered and I have a salad and an appetizer and uh, a main course, and we're going to take dessert home. We weren't worried about it. When someone sets it down and you say, thank you, why is it not, oh, thank you, or enjoy, my pleasure. Let me know if there's something else that you need. It's the responsibility of these managers, and I don't blame the employees. It's the, it's the responsibility of a management and a corporate space to say, this is how we provide service here. We provide service because we want people to come back. We want people to know that they are not a burden. When they come into our establishment, there's no problems. Whatever they want, they get because we're going to charge them for it. We're charging them for not just the food and not just the staff, but the experience. I need to know what it smells like. I need to know what it sounds like. I need to know what it looks like. I need to know if you're putting warm towels down on the table after I eat barbecue that they're warm, they're not cold, unless of course it's a summer day and they ate something cold, then you put a cold towel down. If these things happen consistently, people are going to come back. But now no one expects them anymore because people are like, well, as a consumer, we should be responsible for the things these people are going through. So we should feel shitty for going in there. Like, don't expect too much. They're overworked. When, when, when are we going to get to a place where People are like, yep, this is what we charge and we offer excellent customer service and we 
are going to provide a place where the employees feel valued, compensated to in, in order to provide this kind of service. This doesn't fall on the employees ever in my mind. It always falls on the management, always. You know, at a meet and greet situation, for instance, when someone comes up uh, and they pay a compliment and I say thank you, generally because it's something that they have set aside the time for or stood in line or paid an experience that they've paid for, they're usually very thankful as well. They say thank you for your time. Thank you for engaging with me. Thank you for being present. Uh, I've never experienced really a lot of people that say you're welcome or no problem. I have experienced people say it, but the overwhelming amount of people just say, no, thank you, because you are giving to me back to me what I feel like I'm giving to you. On the subject of thank you and the things to thank and the way we think, I want to send love to everyone out there who has supported the podcast, whether it's in your ears or in your eyes on YouTube, wherever you consume the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means the world. It keeps us going. We are having such a blast with getting amazing guests, people I know, people I'm learning to know. And by you following us on TikTok, on Instagram, all these spaces, it really, really makes it so much fun because we look forward every week to bringing someone different to the conversation and adding them uh, to this conversation that is constantly evolving or sometimes just staying in the same place. Uh, either way, it's real and you are very real. And I want you to know that uh, doing this podcast, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. Coming up, Elliot Norris gets very Delta. That's the tea. Today's guest is the host of My Gay Kitchen on YouTube and is known as Call Me Belly all over the internet. The one and only Elliot Norris. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm excited that you're here. Yeah. I love everything that you put out everywhere on TikTok. On, I first saw you on Instagram. Yeah. So it's interesting. It honestly depends on the week where like I see myself shifting towards. You kind of shift like here and there, but TikTok is like my main platform mm -hmm. and that's where I can just kind of be myself, throw anything out and the videos will do better. So <laughs> what is it if you had to describe to someone what it is that you do now that you've been doing for the past couple of years? What is it that you do? So, I mean, for me. I have always kind of struggled with my weight like growing up. So I wanted to kind of come up with like a fun name that was like kind of Gen Z for TikTok. And I was like, oh, call me. I think it's when that Call Me By Your Name movie was kind of, mm -hmm. it came out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, call me by my belly. Like that's always kind of been a feature of mine. And I don't know, TikTok just allowed me to really embrace that part of me and has like made me so comfortable in my skin and just so much happier. Yeah. So I don't know. Just but the more that I put myself out there, shirtless, cooking, eating, doing like doing whatever the heck I wanted, like the more confident like I felt. Do you ever run into people, um, maybe even within our own community, mm -hmm. that have a problem with that, or 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 think that that that's not the 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 stereotypical body? Mm -hmm. I think when I first started, I got some of that, but I think these days. People are just embracing themselves much more than they have, especially mm -hmm. like after the pandemic. All these like there's like little things that will happen on the Internet, like this big boy song. There's like this big boy SNL song that's gone viral and just little things like that really have, I don't know, empowered a lot of us and just kind of, I don't know, made us feel like more love and accepted. I, I know a few things about about that being a big boy <laughs> and having a belly. Um, but what I don't know about that you could tell me about is the food at Sam's Club because I am so intrigued. Are you a Costco? I've never been to either one in my entire life. Okay. 47 years old. Never, ever, ever been. Back in the day, we used to have a thing called... Um, uh, Price Club. Okay. And that was the same That's idea. Right. Okay. And we had a place called Pace. Pace sounds familiar. Same I idea. Think, yeah. But this is like next level. I mean, I can see the stuff people are getting. And what, what, tell me about it. Well, we can go because that would be a great video for I'll the go. internet. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Go. And I think you can actually go to those places and eat at the, f I think Sam's Club, you can eat at the food court without having a membership. Actually, mm -hmm. Costco, I don't know. I think they make you scan your card. They have all these like different rules. But Sam's Club food is great and it's so cheap. Like you can get like a huge pizza. I'm talking like, it's good for parties. If you ever like have a party, don't mm -hmm. want to cook, you can get these huge things just for like eight, nine bucks. But 
Yeah, I mean, there's pizzas, there's hot dogs, there's churros. I will say the churros aren't amazing, okay. but uh, yeah, there's this big Costco and Sam's Club phenomenon. People like love just eating the food. It's greasy, it's good, it's thin crust. I think the quality is like pretty decent for something that's like from a store. Wait, thin crust? What's your go-to? Thin crust, uh, f- pan, or hand tossed? What's your go-to? I. There's a time for all of them. There's a time for all of them, exactly. I've been like a deep dish kind of Detroit style lately, like with Mm -hmm. the really crispy crust, like the square. Uh And it just gets so, like all the oil seeps in, gets super crunchy, and the cheese starts to kind of like burn a little bit on the edges. I've been super into that lately. Do you put honey on your pizza? Because I've seen people do that. And what does that do? Uh, So yeah, people put like hot honey on their pizza. I have never really been a huge fan because I don't want to eat pizza. I'm just like, I just want like the pizza. I don't want to throw a bunch of like honey on top of that. Like, this isn't tea. But, you know, I did have a good pizza recently where they, like, sprinkled some on, and it was actually pretty good. Yeah. I'm yeah. A fan. yeah. Okay. Do you eat the whole thing, crust included, or are you one of those people that, like, will just, like, throw the crust to the side? I actually have always started eating the crust first. I eat the crust first. Okay. It's really weird. Like maybe I won't eat all of it, but I'll eat like 80% of it and then go for the pizza, then finish off with a little crust. I like that. (laughs) And what, okay, so if you order pizza, like say you're gonna order two medium pizzas. Okay. What's gonna go on each of those pizzas? And you can have up to three toppings. So I'm all about the toppings. I'm like, just put them all on there. That's uh-huh. why I like going to those like, what are those like blaze pizzas and mm-hmm. stuff like that? Because you can literally add every cheese, every meat, every veggie, and it's still the same price. So I will add, I mean, if I'm just going to go to, I'll do a Supreme Meat Lovers, that kind of thing, because I really want to get a lot of toppings. Uh huh. And then, I don't know, the other one, like I live with my sister and she's vegetarian. So usually I'll get like her a little, like, a little veggie pizza. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm always like... uh I get so much anxiety when I order because I usually do like double pepperoni on something, but I never know if they're like, well, double pepperoni is actually different than part of the ingredient. So I never know. I have so much anxiety when it comes to ordering anything. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm also the type of person that will order like, if I order at Taco Bell, there's a place near where one of the shows I do weekly, there's a Taco Bell and a Del Taco right across the street from each other. Competition. Yeah. Yeah. I will order food at one yes. and a drink at the other one. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Where are you getting the drink from? Taco Bell? I'm getting it from Del Taco okay. because it's a, they Coke. have Coke products. Yeah, it's Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. It's a- I'm not opposed to... See, I've gotten this rap that I won't that I hate Pepsi, and okay. I don't hate it. Yeah. I just prefer the other. It's different. It's a lot different. Yeah. There's like a time for Pepsi, I think. Like, obviously, like they have them at like football games, baseball mm-hmm. stadiums. Like, it really does hit different Yeah. at those at those outings i would say but yeah usually it's like- and for you there's always time for coke zero yeah oh, that's interesting i have been recently converted yeah do you we do we have a coke zero here we have one right here we have one oh they're here uh well, take a drink of that and, yeah. and explain it to me tell, tell me the so you've, you drink you drink coke zero now no i don't you don't you diet no. coke right I, I like diet coke but i'd love to i'd love to hear you drink this and explain it to me so coke zero has changed their formula in the past Fifteen months, I would say. Fifteen months, maybe actually two years at this point. And it tastes like the best parts of a diet coke. Okay, like the bubbly. It's more bubbly. Uh-huh. Um, you still kind of get that. I don't know that like super sweetness on the the tip of your tongue, but also you get a hint of the regular coke flavor, which I've never been a big fan of. But with this combo, it just makes sense. Now, what about the size of that can in specific? Or no, all, not all the Coke Zeros are in that size. No, I mean but it's we don't, very European. Yeah, we we don't discriminate. But yeah, I I was converted when I was in Europe, uh, and I've always drank the big big gulps Diet Cokes with tons of ice. Yes. Yeah. Keep talking. Just but, that that's this is what I needed to hear. And I don't know. I've just I don't know. I've just I don't. Maybe it's the can. I don't know if I like the black. It font. is. It is way. It is way more chic. It's like aesthetic. It more, is. A, you think? It is a beautiful can. I, don't I think know it is what beautiful. It is. Can you describe it to me uh, in the same way about your tongue and all that in French? En français, tu veux que je parle en français? Le Coca Zero, c'est pétillant et c'est sucré, mais pas trop sucré. Et je sais pas, je préfère le Coca Zero que le Coca Light. Is what, Coca Light is what they call it in French, like light Coke. Wow. That's how they say diet. Wow. Yeah. I think they're getting rid of, um, I think they're phasing out Diet Coke in some European countries. That's why I can't go there. Yeah. That's that's the only reason. Yep, you can't go. Yeah, that's no. the only reason. Yeah. Um, I, I ask you to speak French because forever I did not know 
that you were French. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a that's an interesting flip to the coin. It's weird because it's like my mom is French, dad is American, mm-hmm. and I grew up in Michigan, so like but yeah. mu- like middle of nowhere. But then every summer we would go to France, so it's like almost like I feel like. What's not Lizzie McGuire? What's the what's the two, one who has like two faces? Oh, two, uh, two, uh, Lizzie Miley, McGuire. Yeah, uh, Lizzie McGuire. Not Lizzie. Uh, what, Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana. Yeah, that was that's what I was. You get going the best for. of both worlds. Yeah, so it's like weird. It's like all of a sudden, like I'm super American, eating at McDonald's, drinking a Diet Coke, going to In and Out, doing the drive through, and then like three months, like I'll go to Europe, and then I'm like this like French bitch. McDonald's. I mean, you just you just mentioned McDonald's. You brought me into that. You've been to oh my gosh. Um, the largest McDonald's in the world. Oh yeah, tell us. So I think that's that was the one in Florida. I've been to so many at this point that I get them confused. But the one in Florida, it's like a restaurant. Have you been? No. So it's in Orlando. It's near the park. So that's where they have like mm-hmm. all the tourist kind of stuff. But it's literally a restaurant. Like it has wow. all the regular McDonald's. The second floor is an arcade, the biggest playpen, and there's literally an arcade. It's like Dave and Buster's in there. It's God. mind-boggling. I was, I, I don't know why I've like never heard of it before. I've seen like videos on it. Yeah. But you could literally order a pizza. They had a, like a stone brick pizza oven. McDonald's there. pizza. Yeah, but it was like. It was good. It was a thin crust. If you like that thin, you know how these restaurants in LA, it's all those kind of thin mm-hmm. crusts, which is good. You know, they're not super filling, but it was the, like thin crust style. And I was like, wow, this is just so weird that it's from McDonald's. Right. You could get pasta. There was pies. There was cheesecakes. There was Belgian waffles, like everything. At a regular McDonald's, do you ever have dessert? Like, um, mm. well, obviously the ice cream machines are broken, Always so broken. we're not having that. Always broken. But uh, right around now, they have they have the um, blueberry cream pie. Oh. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's actually pretty decent in size, and then it's got some sort of cream cheese. Yeah, oh, yum. Et. I don't know what's in there. Yeah. Um, and then the blueberry filling doesn't have any berries because obviously uh-huh. it's like fake. Yeah. But it's so Is good. It good. And they do seasonal. They'll do like a yes. strawberry cream pie, one, yeah. a pumpkin cream. And the holiday one. They do like a holiday uh, one a holiday too pie. with like the green and red little like. Right. I don't know. They're both Are fun. you a party person? Do you like to go out? Yeah, I do like to go out. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of a party boy. I'm, I'm, I go through phases. I think everybody goes kind of go through phases. You can go out a lot for a few months, kind of chill out. What what's what kind of what do you like to go to? Where do you like to go? What's the club? What's the club in West Hollywood? Same. In West Hollywood, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you've probably gone to West Hollywood a million times, so it's like fun, but it's always kind of the same thing. So I'm kind of like burnt out on West Hollywood right now, but I mean, I'll take a break, I think, for a little bit, and then it'll be fun in a few months. But I have fun just internationally, just going to like all those crazy like just European clubs, and like mm-hmm. people are like naked, and like it's just more fun. Just Nick, when we <laughs> when we go to Sam's Club, do we have to wear shirts? I think you have to wear sh- shirts and Sam's you shoes. Do? Are, Can I, I wear a the... belly shirt? Yeah, of course. Really, so. like a crop? You think? Would oh, be for fine? sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Right. I huh. think so. Yeah, I that's think totally what to fine. wear. Probably some sugar shorts. <laughs> you have on sugar shorts. Yeah, I like. To, I like. I, I you always have wear to. shorts. I always wear shorts. You have to. Yeah. Well, you know what's weird because like we, we, it's been rainy like what like a couple of weeks ago, uh-huh. and then here in California, as you know, like when it rains, people are like, oh my gosh, like the storm of the century. Freaking out, freaking out. But for the most part, it it's it might be bad. cold in the morning, but it heats up. Yeah. And so it's like we're always in shorts. It like burns off like halfway yeah. through the day. Yeah. I prefer shorts. It's just more comfortable. We're in California. It's more chill here. Why not wear shorts? It is. I agree. And you can wear them wherever. Yeah. And like everywhere is like pretty chill, like restaurants and stuff. It's not like there's like dress codes everywhere. Right. That's the only reason you have to wear pants in other states is like they're like, oh, you're a guy. You have to wear pants to get into this restaurant. Completely. Like, this is so stupid. I was Completely. like, why? Let me wear my damn shorts. Wear your shorts all the time. Right. Yeah. Let's take a I break. Try to. After the break, more with Elias Norris Boots. And we are back with Elliot Norris. Call me Belly. Well, call him Belly. Please don't call me Belly. <laughs> what could, well, what? It's not the I bad. think it's charming. Yeah. I think it's actually quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I would want to, like, I would want to um, sort of, um, without doing any exercise whatsoever or uh, moving my body at all, for me, I would want it to be more like smooth Winnie the Pooh, kind of. And it depends on, like, what you wear, too. Like, certain different, like, shorts mm-hmm. make your stomach look a little bit different. And, like, I like mine looking a certain way. Which What's is, like, the way? Is, that's why I, like, wear, like, shorts. Like, like with kind of, like, looser kind of straps. So it's kind of just, like, it's not, like, constricted, you know? Mm-hmm. I like it to feel like, a little bit more, like, free-flowing and out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. I I'm I'm I love this. Yeah. I love this. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I feel like it's something that people have never really until recently been comfortable totally. because it's a, it's a movement. Yeah. It's a movement of people that are like stop fucking making fun of one Who another. Cares? Like yeah. stop being worried yeah. about it. Yeah. And if you want to be uh you know, you want to have abs for some reason some people want to have abs. <laughs> fucking go for it. <laughs> Who would want that? If you had abs, would you, if you had like perfect abs, like, Uh like, would you then put your shirt on or would you take your, leave your shirt off? Oh my God, no, I would have that shit off all the time. Would you? I'd be annoying, I think. Really? I don't know, maybe not. I don't think you'd be annoying. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know, I feel like abs change people though. Like, I don't think it would change me, but I think it does, right? Like, I don't people Why do they have them, do you think? I don't know. Maybe it's like, I think it's like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they're like missing something. Like sometimes they don't have like a good personality mm. or they're like not educated. No, this is We're going to so get bad. shredded so bad. <laughs> Everyone's going to fucking hate us. They're going to be like, know. you bitch, why did you tell him but that? You, I th- you can think of it. You can think of someone who has abs just because like they need to have abs. Mm-hmm. They don't, no, right. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think that there's people that, that do have, yeah, there's people that, love a balance they're they're able to have an amazing balance they're able to um really enjoy the time with fitness they they enjoy pushing their boundaries and i think that's amazing it's like we were talking off camera about this idea of like being high raw vegan and to me that i watch tiktok videos of it i'm so intrigued yeah, by it go I for think it it's beautiful to like do that um i wish i had the control i wish i had the ability to learn that way totally respect it yeah and that's like but it's but again it's all centered around food yeah. like what you do is centered around food what what is your interest in food has it always been a, a thing yeah so i mean i grew up around a lot of food my mom is she's from france but she was born in north africa and tunisia so that's a very cooking eating feed your kids mm-hmm. we're cooking at home that kind of lifestyle i guess um and french people I mean, they're known for, you know, cooking and having really good food. So right. I've always been kind of around that. And we we did a lot of traveling growing up. Uh, you know, I was super blessed to be able to, like, go all around Europe, like, super young. My mom was kind of working around there, so she would just take us to these different countries. So food and travel has always been, like, you know, it's always been something that's been really, like, prevalent, or prevalent in my life. So then in Michigan, I don't know, we would, you know, dabble into the the food, you know, I don't know, Midwesterner culture, mm-hmm. you know, with the fast food and the chain restaurants. But then we also still had this like home cooked meal balance. So yeah, it's always been a big part of me. And then I just really enjoyed cooking at home. My mom kind of taught us how to cook really, really young. So yeah, it's always kind of been part of it. And what would be like a, like a, a nice, simple French breakfast that you might prepare? Yeah. French people, so this is interesting. French people eat sweets in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, like, eggs are kind of a new thing. Like, brunch is, like, starting to become really popular, at least in France. I don't know about the rest of Europe. But it's, like, this new phenomenon. It's like, oh, let's go to brunch. And I think it's, I mean, I think it's really cute and endearing. But it's like, we've been doing brunch for a while in the U.S. Right. But it, it's like, but they're for the, over there, it's, like, very sweet. So they eat, like, croissants, pain au chocolat, anything from, like, a boulangerie. What was the, what was the second one? Pain au chocolat, croissant. Oh yeah, pain au chocolat is like um, is the croissant with uh-huh. chocolate in it. Uh huh. Have you go, go to Starbucks? Uh, I do go to Starbucks. And they have like but the chocolate one. Yeah, I uh, I've had that. Well, they got yeah. rid of the almond one. Oh, that one, that is really good. It's so good. They got rid of it. Yes. I know. Why would they get rid of that? It's oh so good. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Um, I am. I am. An, I I dine internationally, uh-huh. and um, <laughs> I I know about fine things. Uh, like pirouettes. Yeah, pirouette. Would you like a pirouette? I would love a pirouette. Would you? How yes. is it? Pirouette. pirouette. Oh, I don't say that right, do I? The little chocolate hazelnut. Please have as uh, many as you like. You should have one too. I, I um. You can't. I can't. I don't. These aren't my real teeth. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh shit. No, these are fake. These are wooden. Oh yeah. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, those are crunchy. Mmm. These are chocolate hazelnut pirouette. Mm-hmm. There you go, pirouette. Uh huh. They're good. You like it? Would you like some uh, more diet uh, or Coke Zero? With I that? will. I will definitely wash it down with some Coke Zero. Ooh, sorry. A little ASMR. Is that what we're going? For? Yeah. Sweet Elliot Norris. My God, just a doll. You know, we have a friend in common, Mayhem Miller. Yeah. And I remember uh, saying to Mayhem a long time ago when we first started doing this, I was like, I really, really want to get um, Elliot Norris. Do you know Elliot Norris? And mm-hmm. she's like, girl, I've done Elliot Norris's show. Uh-huh. And I was like, wait, what? That was like, that is like, I honestly love Mayhem for like 
letting me like, I mean, I hired her. This was like three or four years ago before I was even doing anything on the internet. And I got funded for this project. And it was like the original OG My Gay Kitchen, like BuzzFeed and Instagram were funding it. Wow. I didn't have any followers. Like I wasn't really doing it. I had like maybe 500. And I was like, I need a drag queen who wants to like come and cook. And I like DM'd her. I don't know. I emailed her manager. You know, it took a while. But she finally like came on and we paid her and everything. And so like I was like, oh my God, I was love her for like coming on like and you yeah. know just giving me a shot i guess do you have can you remember like when, what was your first like sort of viral moment oh interesting yeah i think i started during the pandemic i was one of those like tiktok pandemic people who was mm-hmm. just like kind of bored during the pandemic and was just like filming stuff i was just like home i was like wow now i have all this time i was still working my full-time job but i was like now i'm at home i'm gonna start cook i was trying to eat i was like eating healthier and all these recipes but I think my first a big viral moment, I think, was I remember I was like back at my dad's in Michigan and I had nothing to film. I was so bored. So I was like, I'm just going to do like these like recipes, like little recipes. And I remember it was this broccoli mash video, mm. which, oh, my gosh, I still get tagged and stuff to this day. I do not eat the broccoli mash, really. I no. literally just mashed a broccoli. It's just mi- mashed up broccoli. It's literally mashed up broccoli with like milk and Parmesan. I would love that, I think. Do you not like no, broccoli? It's, no, it's good. It's good. Texture. It's good. No, no, the texture is good, okay. but it's just, that just like blew my mind that like, that was like such a hit and people freaked the F over that. Really? I was like, broccoli, mashed broccoli. Say freak the fuck in French. Uh, I don't know if there's a word for that. Um... Freak the fuck. Um, Say something that just sounds completely vulgar in French. To dig your ass. Yeah. Dig your ass. <laughs> You're Absolutely. Nasty. Dig your ass nasty. You're nasty. That's, that's what I'm saying. Nasty. That's just, that, it doesn't even have to make sense to me. It just has to come <laughs> out. It has to roll off the tongue like a piouette. <laughs> you are launching something really, really cool. Yes. And that is a freeze-dried candy. Yes. Yeah, project yeah yeah explain this to me yeah I-, I mean so i've been on the internet for a few years and i was like i i mean how i make most of my money is through like brand partnerships brand deals sponsored content so i do ads for all of these companies so why don't i just start my own company yeah. and do ads for it every day that's sickening yeah so i'm launching my candy company called sugar belly mm-hmm. which i think is cute adorable I will name totally send you some we're starting this week we're finishing a few permits but yeah, we're launching this month. There's going to be a bunch of freeze-dried candies, lots of sweets, a lot of goodies. So, I mean, Is this going to be like something people can order? Yes, yeah. So you're going to be able to... We're trying to ship worldwide. Um, but yeah, you can order it. How yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, That's super, yeah, super exciting. We'll see how it goes. It's very asmr It's very crunchy. When you freeze-dry candy, it kind of puffs up. It quadruples in size. So it's kind of been big in the YouTube ASMR community, but now mm-hmm. it's super viral and trendy. So we'll see where it goes. Do you like Pop Rocks? I do like Pop Rocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, uh, they're kind of scary sometimes. No? They are scary because yeah. I feel like more is going to have, like it's leading up to something yeah, like, like super work, explosive. It, w- I always think it's like going into your lungs. It, I think it is. You think so? I think it's like it's asbestos candy. Exploding. Yeah, it's just weird. And then they're like two minutes later, another one will pop and you're like, where is this? Like, yeah. Is it here? Here? Like there's holes. Like it's from, va- like it's like vaping. Yeah. Like vaping too oh, hard. Weird. Like getting like stuck we into those vape that. holes. <laughs> in the vape. <laughs> right. We should just eat more butter. I agree. Yeah, because that's fine. Of People are scared of butter. I think butter, if you eat Pop Rocks and they leave holes like throughout your system, the butter will fill those holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, it's like it'll kind of smooth yeah. it out. You know what else smooths out the holes? What? A bakery-inspired pudding snack. I have these right here. Ooh. And these are Cinnabon Bakery-inspired Cinnamon pudding. Yum. I'm a huge cinnamon fan. Okay. I love I love cinnamon stuff. I'm I like um kind of like fall baked yes. goods. Okay. I love so that. Like the fall, like pumpkin spice kind of vibe. Uh, you, you know what? I am. I'm that. You like you that. get all the pumpkin spice stuff, like pumpkin spice bread. I get it Trader all. Trader Joe's, all of it. I get it all. Yeah. And I mean, they've made it like really fun. Honestly, I will. Yeah. I like they the marketing for all that stuff. I would say over the years it's gone a little crazy. Yeah, like it it's really intense, but yeah. like it's fun. Should we try these puddings? <laughs> Let's do it. So oh do you gosh. have you? Do you like cinnamon? 
I absolutely love Cinnabon, and I would actually be fine going to Cinnabon and just ordering those little solo uh, yes. clear cups of just frosting. Oh, oh yeah, just the frosting. Yeah, yeah I don't know what I'm they put in the frosting. Yeah. I had the Cinnabons from Pizza Hut, the mini ones. Oh, how are those? So good. Yeah? I really like a soft, 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 almost like too wet. Yeah, yeah, almost like too wet of a cinnamon. Oh, you know? I, I, I don't mind it being wet. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I like when they have like the pecans. I love oh, like, interesting. creamy nuts. Oh, wow. I love, I love creamy nuts. Do you mix it or do you like do layer by layer? Um. Well, I, I have a feeling this is already infused. It kind of is. I think a little bit, yeah. yeah. Like the bottom looks more... Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the... Cinnabon. To the creamy pudding. Cinnabon. It's very good. It's pretty good. Yeah. It does kind of taste like Cinnabon frosting. It tastes just like it, actually. It you does. could actually use this as a frosting. Maybe you it's could. like a healthier... F- Maybe not. What but. if we got all of these and put them in a cake pan? Yeah. And then dumped a vanilla cake on top? That is just, a viral TikTok right there. It's a thing, right? Yeah. A dump cake. Yeah, dump cake. They like just put the... What is it? They just put the, the, the powder... No, they put the powder on top? What do they do? They put it on top and then they slice butter. Yeah, they slice the butter... And then it's supposed to like seep in kind of, you could definitely, oh, that's kind of a good idea. Like a pudding, a pudding cake. Yeah. Let's take a break. Get ready to really Delta boots. Dollar, dollar bill. Dollar, dollar bill. <laughs> dollar, dollar bill. Come get her. And we are back with uh, Elliot Norris, who just said dollar, dollar bill. Come get her. Come get her. <laughs> I think it's I, in the Kimanaj lyric or something. Is it? I think so. Dollar Dollar Bill, come, come and get it. her. Even your man know Nikki do it better. Do you love Nikki? I do love Nikki, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like I, I say I'm a stan, but I like I'm not like the best stan, you know? Okay. Like I don't know everything, but I do right. love her, you know? Yeah. I think. Right? You're into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love a zillion, zillion different types of music. And it always surprises people, like if like my car door opens and it's like <laughs> and they're like why are you listening to City Girls? Like, how do you know what that is? And I'm like, because I know. Like, it's on the radio. Because I'm a real ass bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, City that's, yeah. I love shit like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, this is the part of the podcast where people send letters and they don't always know who's here. Okay. Obviously, because it's top secret until it comes out. Read me, Delta! So it could be, uh, you know, they're not going to send you a letter like, tell me about yes. your favorite recipe. Totally. Because, um, It'll be general I don't know. to some degree. I already asked you that. Yeah. I already asked you stuff like that. Um, have you ever opened or answered letters on YouTube or TikTok without a shirt on? I have not. And it's actually not? like, I let's do it now. Okay. And I might do it again in the future. Really? Yeah, because it's actually genius. That's yeah, a really good I idea. Think it, I think it's a good idea. That is, I mean, that's like a fun name. way to do like the fan mail yeah. opening, you know? So to take my shirt off. Well, I mean, you could stand up and do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people, that way everyone can, yeah, we're not looking or anything. No. This is all for art, the purposes of art. There you go. Yeah. And do you have any tattoos on your back? Stand up. I do not have any tattoos. You don't? Oh, see, she's not just belly. She's booty, too. Yeah, your body is bootylicious. Got a little booty for white boy. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's that's butter. That's butter. <laughs> that's butter. Um, okay, so uh, people are. If by the way, if you want to send a letter uh, to be answered by myself and a guest, which uh, will always will happen, it doesn't have to be just a letter uh, asking a question. It could be an observation that mm. maybe we you've heard us talk about. You can send that to uh, readmedelta at gmail dot com. Questions, um, I would say queries, I would say maybe not full commentary because, you know, you open that up Ugh, and people will say, so annoying. first letter is going to be here um, on this foot. That's probably size like 14, 15. What size shoe do you wear? 10 and a half. Ten, you know what? That's interesting. So do I. Look at that. It's a good shoe size. My letter opener is not inside my letter opener box. Can oh. you believe it? But oh, that's okay. Like, I always come prepared. Wait, it's like a, it like opens it? Yeah. Oh, wow. A special letter. Fancy. Oh, here it is. It's over here. I was going to show you um, oh, that I can wow. open it with a makeup brush. But if you're ever in a hotel room and you're doing drag uh-huh. and you you order food and they do not send you utensils, you can turn two makeup brushes upside down and just use them as chopsticks. Oh. I've done it. You would have figured that out, though. Genius. Yeah. I mean, you're, listen. That is a expert. cool letter opener. This. Um, let me make sure we do this right. Sometimes it gets jammed in there and it like rips the letter. Uh, actually rips the letter. Yeah. Okay. 
first letter is... Oh, this is a good one. Um, I'm going to put your name on here because it does seem a little okay. tailored to both of Ooh, us. Great. Dear Delta and Elliot, what are the best places to eat to take someone out on a date? Is there... Um, is there or are there a way to convey my intentions through the food that I order? Are there dishes that are more suggestive than others? Love, very Sebastian. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I think it is. I think it's, yeah. What, what do you say? I I think like sitting down at like, at least like in LA, I'm thinking LA, like sitting down like at an LA restaurant on a first date, like just, you know, something nice. That is so boring, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, that is so whack. And, like, uh, let me just get, like, a skinny margarita. Like, no. Like, that is so boring. I guess when I go on first dates, like, it's I try to do something, like, fun. Like, we're going to go, I don't know, go to an arcade. We're going to do something golf, putt-putt golf, whatever it is. And usually the food kind of comes after for me. So it's, like, mm -hmm. I've literally gone on first dates and, like, let's go get Taco Bell. Like, after, like, yeah. we play, go on arcade. I think that's way more fun and shows you more of who they actually are because if they're like ew hell no mm -hmm. i would never like taco bell like on a tuesday i'm like okay well it's not gonna work this is exactly would have been yeah. my answer too right and also too like um a lot of i remember reading this article one time that was uh it was like like it was like ladies home journal or one of those kind of things. And it suggested that if you go out on a date, you should always eat a clear broth. So that way nothing gets stuck in your teeth. And then, you know, you're not embarrassed because there's like, God forbid there'd be an herb stuck in your tooth and somebody, but like a lot of people do go on dates and they're like very worried about, well, I don't want them to see how much I'm going to eat. And like, bitch, let them see that you are enjoying yourself because they're eventually going to find out that, guess what? Sometimes you pig out. Sometimes you fucking fart. Sometimes you trip. <laughs> sometimes you eat yeah. Taco Bell. And then if you do eat Taco Bell, by the by, um, just saying, like, Sebastian asked, is there anything that will let people know your intentions? If they take you out to Taco Bell and you just order a maybe like an iced tea and some cinnamon twists, I think you're letting them know, like, I'm going to bottom tonight. Because <laughs> like whoever's like throwing down at Taco Bell, their intentions are like, guess what? Uh, I'm probably going to top. <laughs> I'm probably going to top. But um, not that that, I mean, you know, I don't know. If you do it quickly, it won't get there oh, yet. Yeah. 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 You got to like know what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. But I think I so agree with yeah. you. Like, why would you want to go somewhere and fake who you are? Like, dates are supposed to be fun. Yeah. Why would you not have fun? And I don't know. I guess that's my type of fun, though. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're, okay, maybe if you're like a super, you're going out with like a fitness guru and you are a fitness guru mm -hmm. and like you, I don't know, maybe you're teaching each other something about that, but you're just an average person like everybody else. Or beyond that, if you're just like a, like a real bitch, they know you eat, girl. They look at you. They're not surprised. They're going to be like, why are you only eating one taco? Yeah. I bet you could eat more than that. Like, it doesn't have to be Taco Bell, obviously, but I'm just saying, no, you know what I mean? No, it's like, I agree. Like, I feel like people, like, send her, like, the food or, or like, going to dinner as part of the day, but I feel like do something like that. It's not just so, like, basic and boring. Right. I don't know. At least right. for me, like, I don't know. I'm, everybody's different. Everyone is different. But, like, yeah. you know what's fun is, like, thrift store shopping. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because you can see what people are into. And um, oftentimes, too, when you do go shopping in that manner, you can find out, like, not only what people are into, but also size-wise. So that way, if you're ever buying them a gift and you don't want to ask, yeah. you're like, this seems to be work for you in a jacket, you know? Yeah. Genius. Sebastian, I say the same as Elliot. Just have fun, you know? Have fun. Yeah. Okay, this letter is inside this purse. And it's coming out. There it goes. Fancy, we have creative, interesting purse. ways people send in letters. Some people send in gift cards. Oh, that's great. We love yeah. those. Gift cards is great. Venmo is really good, too. Venmo Heard is that's wonderful. Really is that yeah. how people find you on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> My platform is Venmo. <laughs> no, but it's in the bio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We should say that when people are like, where are you on the internet? I'm on Cash App. I'm really popular in Venmo on Cash App. <laughs> Not so much on Zelle these days, right. but like Venmo is pretty good. Right. I'm popular on um, Target gift card. Yeah. Okay. Dear Delta and guest, I want to know your thoughts on ghosting. Unfortunately, Ooh. there are no gay bars where I live and I have to use dating hookup apps to meet people. Mm. I seem to always be the victim of ghosting. Why do people do it? 
I like to get to know people. Am I too nice? Big fan of the show. <laughs> uh, Ryan, P.S. Diet Coke reigns supreme. Ooh, Fuck Coke Zero. Coke Zero. <laughs> the tea, the drama. Well, have you ever been ghosted? I mean, I think. Yes, I've been ghosted many times, and I've also unfortunately done the ghosting as well. Really? What would bring you to that point? To I don't know. Someone? Just like me, just, I don't know. I don't know. So well, he just happens. Ryan is saying, like, yeah. am I too nice? So mm. have you ever been in a situation where maybe, um, maybe they're like, you're like, oh, I don't mind talking with this person. Like, yes. they seem cool. Yes. And then, like, it maybe moves to a thing yes. where it, do you ever feel like maybe you oversold? Like, I'm not that interested that way. Totally. And mean? yeah, I think there's, I mean, it's everything's like situational. Yeah, I think that's happened a lot of times too, sure. where you take, you kind of get excited and then you're like, wait, actually, like maybe I'm not looking for this type of relationship or maybe, yo, I'm about to go travel for three months. So like, I probably shouldn't go into a relationship like this. Yep. But I don't know. I feel like, he, I mean, he said something about how he didn't have any gay bars, but I feel like all these like dating apps like Grindr and stuff, it's kind of what you make of it. I think there is this like idea that like Grinder is just for hookups. I found three of my long term boyfriends on Grinder. Really? I mean, maybe that's really rare. It probably is like somewhat like a small percentage, but it's what you make of it. Sometimes it does start off as like a hookup, but if you guys are really getting along at the end of the day and you guys keep hanging out, like that's how I don't know. It's led to relationships for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely that the, the communication idea, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm just here for fun. Yeah. But what they don't realize is like, you know, if they immediately make a connection with someone. Totally. But you sold it as I'm only here for fun, then you're expecting that person to like do what you're doing. And you're like, no, you told me it was just fun. Like, you know what I mean? So that that can be a little bit scary. But um, I mean... I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with being being nice or I don't think you're being too nice. I think there are, in fact, people who also I mean, listen, there's people that just have a good time creating these lives online and telling people I'm this person and they have never had an intention of doing anything just because it's they they know they're never going to meet because they're too scared to. Yes, too scared to. Yeah, And so they just create these personalities a la catfish, you know. I guess that does happen, but I mean, um, I also think too, just as you said, sometimes you get into a, a position where like you're going to be traveling. Yeah. What they're then they're going to think you're being chicken shit if you tell them that. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not lying. I really yeah, am. Yeah, I'm going to be. Yeah. But also for someone who's who is in the spotlight like yourself, um, it's difficult for you to be able to separate what you do with a personal life because those people are like, oh my gosh, you're Elliot Norris. So let's talk about you being Elliot Norris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that does happen a lot. And like, I've had people like, I, there is still a few like grinder stalkers out there who like make new pro profiles like every freaking day wow. just to like get nudes or whatever it is. Like that is totally crazy. But yeah, yeah, there's definitely sometimes kind of like that. But I don't know, I try, that's why, I, I don't know, I sometimes meet people online, but sometimes just in person is like the best for me because then I can mm -hmm. just let it come out naturally. Right. But I don't know. I think Ryan well, just you know, maybe you sow your wild oats and you just find yourself a nice girl and settle down. I don't <laughs> yeah, know what you boys are doing. Life, maybe one day. <laughs> you boys are wild out here. Aren't the kids wild? They're very wild. They just run around and sleep with each other and send pictures and Videos. talk on their computer phone. And, uh -huh. Oh, gosh. I wouldn't have done anything like that when I was young. <laughs> just hang out in on all aim. the bars until they fucking close and crawl on my hands and knees in the alley like a <laughs> in the normal back. person. <laughs> like a normal person. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Elliot, for being here. Thank you so much this for having me. This is so fun. Me. Yeah, it's been a blast. I love talking about food. Why are you so fun? Why are you <clears> just like just you? I honestly didn't know. I mean, everyone told me how nice you were, but honestly, you are an absolute charm. Stop it. Really, Thank really, you. really. No, for you're real. Adorable and very, super nice. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to Very Delta. You can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday, and you can find us here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Also, a special hello to everyone watching the show on YouTube. And uh, you know what's very Delta? Subscribing to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can also send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work, or um, you can follow me on Cash App at dollar sign Delta Work. And then what's my Venmo? I don't remember. <laughs> but where can people find you? Uh, people, you can find me on Instagram, Elliot Norris, or on TikTok, Call Me Belly. But 
I'm so, I'm somewhere on the socials. You'll where, find where, me. where where it's your cash or your uh, Venmo name? My Venmo name is ETJN. Are you active there? I'm very active. You do, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I love that. I love that. Um, <laughs> you can also follow me um, on uh, on TikTok. You can follow Very Delta on TikTok for dedicated socials, clips, all the updates about the show, and of course, join me right here next week for another episode of Very Delta. And until then, keep things very Delta. Next episode, bitch, it's Nicole Page Brooks. And I am. Are, wait, are you? I, am doing, I, if I'm getting your order, I'm also getting your order as I'm driving through the drive-through, and I have held it over one time. Why did you do that? I tell me why, girl. Just because you just tell him you want no pickles, no onion. I'm a, I, I'm a food person, but I want it a particular way. I'm How do you, always, what's like a particular? No way you mustard, want onion, or pickle. No mop. Wait, no mustard, onion, or, or pickle, pickle on anything. On anything. Don't even put the pickle on my plate. If the juice is like touch my bum, we got to start over from scratch. I'm one of those. Oh. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margo Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. <laughs>